Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure for us, the elders, to present the AY program this afternoon. Happy Sabbath to you all. And a special greeting to those who are joining us virtually. The program promises to be spiritual and attendance worthy and has potential for increase of knowledge, retrospection, and transformation. Our theme is reconciliation. That we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity, reconciliation has to be a very important ingredient especially in the life of one who is striving for the kingdom. John Calvin defined reconciliation as peace between humanity and God. It is also defined as the restoration of friendly relationship. And for the children who may not understand the meaning, I would say it means to make wrong right, to restore friendly relations. There will always be disagreement, which many times cause breakdown in relationship of humanity. Oftentimes we have such experience and become estranged from one another our close friends now become someone in whom we, we have no confidence. However, such broken relationship can be mended. And when such happens, we will experience reconciliation, which gives a wonderful feeling to both parties. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, counseled and said, If thou bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that thy brother has aught against thee, leave the gift there before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to the brother, and then come and offer thy gift. In any reconciliation, God the Father has taken the lead in mending relationship. Such a work is done through the ministry of his son, Christ Jesus, whom through his shed blood make peace with all things. Did you know that each of us has a special role in reconciliation? In 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 20, the Apostle Paul says, God has given us a ministry of reconciliation. He says we are ambassadors and should share his message of reconciliation with others. Jesus himself also alluded to this point when he said, as you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. So while we cannot reach up to the level of the work of Jesus, the reconciler, we are called to bring peace and harmony to our fellow men by helping to mend the broken relationships, reconciling people to the creator and facilitating unity so we can stand in the face of adversity. Reconciliation is a product of love. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to restore us sinners back to himself. And I say, praise the Lord. This afternoon, we will be looking at two stories in which there has been some form of reconciliation. I hope you will 
enjoy.
Good evening, mm -hmm. AYS. Good evening, AYS. I want to welcome everyone to another AY program. AY? AY program. <laughs> and as you would have guessed, the elders are doing AY this evening. It's not a very regular thing that we do, but we have been invited and so we're here to participate. The theme has have been introduced to you by Elder MacDonald is about reconciliation. And there's so much that we can learn from just what the idea of reconciliation is about. We have been brought to a particular story in the Bible, the story of Joseph and his friends, Elder. His well, brothers, go, you mean? Yes, but before we go any further, let me introduce Elder Wint, that you guys should know. And myself, I'm Brother Otty. We want to welcome those persons that are joining us, not just in church this evening, but those are, that are in the virtual space. Elder, it is easy for me to start by asking a very simple question. What is reconciliation? Well, it is easy to answer that because Elder MacDonald went through and gave us quite a bit on what is re um, reconciliation. But if we were listening carefully, we would have heard that peace are words that could be between two persons. It could mean restoration. It could mean that there is a broken relationship. It has to do with relationships that have been broken. And then there is some kind of intervention which bring peace, brings peace and it brings happiness. And in other words, a restoration of the relationship. And of course, she did say in her um, definitions of what rec reconciliation is motivated by love. That's right. So would I then be exaggerating to say that relationships are the most important thing in this world? Would I be exaggerating? Uh, would I be exaggerating if I go as far as saying that I'm saying this because if one were to look at the commandments, there's a very clear indication in that the relationship of man with God and the relationship between man and man. So would I be exaggerating if I say that? Not quite, but I think you'd have to make some distinctions because not all relationships are good relationships. So when we are talking about reconciliation this evening and how it affects relationships, we're talking about healthy relationships. What should have been healthy relationships that have gone bad? So in other words, you can only reconcile if something has been messed up. If something has been messed up. All right. So let's go into the Bible. The Bible brings to us a story about Joseph and his brothers. Yes. We know the story very well. Very well. We know how it started. But just for emphasis, we are reminded that there was this young dreamer who was a favored son of his father. Yes. Because he was favored because he was the, the son of his wife that he loved. Ah, uh, yes. Now, being favored has its perks. One of those perks was that is that it made him this beautiful coat. Yes. I think in today's world, we would say he was kind of spoiled. He was spoiled. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, he was given a very nice coat. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, he loved to dream. Um, what was wrong with his dream? Well, I don't know if he loved to dream or is it that he had some dreams. And I think the dreams pleased him. Because as we saw from the video clip, his dreams seemed to suggest that his brothers were going to bow down to him as was seen in the stars and the moon and all of those. But, but not just his brothers, his father too. And when it came that his, that his son, moon and stars, his father thought, are you saying that you're going to bow down? So there was, I think with the father, there was something that was not quite understood. Right. But the brothers did see it, that it was suggesting that he was con going to be, continue to be a very favored, very, very favored of all of them. And, of course, that brought resentment. All right. Now, that word is a serious word. Resentment. Yes. Now, they resented him because of his dream 
or they resented him because of the interpretation of his dreams? They resented him because of what the, the dreams seemed to suggest, and they resented him because his father favored him above them, hmm. so that their, I could say that was a double whammy. Double whammy. Okay. Now, the story continues. Mm -hmm. His father sent him to look for his brothers who were in the field, mm -hmm. grazing the, 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 the animals. Mm -hmm. Now, he was asked to go and see what was happening and bring back a report. Yes. But when he went there, I guess as a little man, he likes to talk. So he told them the dream. And they, they, was it that they were offended again by what he was saying? What, what was happening here? I don't know if he even got the chance to tell them because the story tells us that as soon as they saw him here comes the dreamer here comes the dreamer so he was not a brother anymore mm. you notice that he was now right. the dreamer so it suggests the estrangement that had taken place between the brothers mm. so you had joseph on one side and all the other brothers on the other side so he was not a part of the inner circle of brothers then no 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 yeah. not at all, all right. okay so the dreamer came, there was a decision as to what we're going to do about the dreamer. When he did come, eventually, he was thrown in a pit. Before you, before you get to that, Elder, yes. there are some things that I want to point out about broken relationships and how simple things, probably simple things to some of us as parents and within families, and not only our own immediate families but any family that we are a part of church family or any group that can cause it favoritism oh yes favoritism to favor one above the other can lead to broken relationships but it's the because that was a elder when it is in the house it, that was in the house yes. and when it manifests itself in practical things he was given this coat of many colors that is to say, he was given something above and beyond what the others got. To show him that he was special. To show that he was special. Favoritism. I wanted to say something else about broken relationships. Mm -hmm. When you have sometimes broken relationships um, manifest that don't manifest themselves openly. Because nowhere did we read in that story or probably see in the video that the father recognized that the other brothers were offended because of what was happening. So something was seething inside of them. Therefore, when, they, when he was coming and said, behold the dreamer, he was not seen as one of them anymore. He was not seen as one of them. So in other words, to me, it had moved from just being jealous and envious to hatred. Right. And that tells us that little things that can be solved sometimes grow into big things. They fester. Fester. Mm -hmm. And here we have now that he's there bringing to, to see how they're doing and take back words to his father. And their response is like, let us kill him. Mercy. Let us kill him. No, let us not, do away with these him. These are not strangers, you know. These are not strangers. No, these are family members. These are family members. Yes. All right. No. considering these brothers saying, let us kill the little brother. Mm-hmm. I am trying to understand what would have come over them for them to have reached that, that, that point of extreme that they desire to take the life of their, of their little brother. That's how sin is, Elder. Exactly. Anytime you harbor certain feelings, it don't remain there. And Satan is a wily foe. He makes things happen to cement that and let it grow. So I think it grew to um, a stage where they just wanted to be rid of him. I don't think they looked at consequences. They just allowed it to fester to this, and there was opportunity. Mm -hmm. He was away from home. He didn't have his dad to protect him or anything. He was at our mercy. And this is the time to, to do it, do away with him. And not only that, didn't think of the father at first. It's just the plan. And then this is what we would do to cover up this evil plan, because at first it was murder. Mm -hmm. That was where it is. Yes. So, so the thought of murder, and we would say, thank God that there was somebody thinking otherwise. Let us not kill him. Let's put him in a pit. Let's put him in the pit. Yes. All right. And, 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 and as you would have it, there was traitors. 
even before that elder, I want to point out something else. They were, these were all brothers. All brothers. All brothers. Do you recognize that also there is a responsibility sometimes that we have that we misuse that opportunity? Mm -hmm. Because there was Reuben. Simeon, I think, was the one that was bent on doing one. away with the it. extreme one, yes. Reuben had a softer heart. Yes. But Reuben was not able to stand up and say, no, guys, let's, let's, let's not do that. He didn't acknowledge any reason. He said, look here, let us not put him in the pit. Let us not kill him. Let's put him in a pit. In his mind, he wanted to say that, um, or he was thinking, when they are gone, I'll slip back and I'll take him out. No. But he was not strong enough to stand up to say, this is not right. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm not going to be a part of it, or I don't think we should do it. S yes? We, 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 we are therefore saying, Elder, that... Not because the crowd says it is, is right, it is right you know. Yeah, that's right. And we have to be keen on that, young people. That not because the crowd says it, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be party to everything that the, 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 the throng is saying. Yes. You are supposed to be able to put yourself in the position to chant your own part. To make decisions that are sound and in your best interest. Yes. But the story continues, Ella. Yes. Where, where eventually... Yes. He was sold. Yes, he was sold as a slave to traders. Right. Yes. The Midianites. Who brought him down where? Egypt. To Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, I cannot imagine how this young man must have felt. From where he was, and then he found himself in a pit. Then he found himself on a caravan. And then he found himself in Egypt. In Egypt. As a young man. As a young man. Mm -hmm. You understand? No. I don't know about, about you, but Elder, I know that I would be in a very bad place personally. When I read in, in, in Patriarchs and Prophets Elder, mm -hmm. um, Ellen G. White suggests that he cried a lot. But the story in itself, as it is in the Bible, didn't say that he cried while he was there. We, we see him suffering silently, it would seem. We see him suffering silently, which gives me the impression that in... in, in Going back to what Elder MacDonald said, that Jesus, Jesus took upon himself to come to earth mm -hmm. to bridge the gap between us. Yes. And Isaiah speaks of him as he's brought as a lamb the to the slaughter, the suffering servant. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I look at the story again, I see that Joseph represented a type of Christ. Right. Never resisted, never complained never put up a fight or showed anything no resentment. showed no resentment as far we could see we from see, the yes. from holy writ mm -hmm. and that he just went just went with it just mm -hmm. went along with it and even as he got down into egypt he was sold again mm -hmm. went to potiphar mm -hmm. and the striking thing about that he was not the she, he was a victim every time he was a victim yet again. he again another time around okay. and yet he just said nothing i think um ellen white also says that he must have rec recalled all the times that he spent with his father listened to and knew how his father was um how he related to his god mm -hmm. and at that time it must have come home real to him that all those things that he observed in his father then I have to, you know, let them be evident in my life. And so he went about every job that he had to do quite well. The, mm -hmm. the story in that for our young people is that in your family, in your family circle, you will be exposed to different things. Yes. I'm saying choose what is right choose what is right but it's also a call to parents we have to expose exactly. them exactly parenting mm -hmm. and the exposure that comes with it but Elder, we are going to fast forward again we yes the jump. we are familiar with all the things that happened to to, to joseph his imprisonment and incarceration and his interpreting a pharaoh's dream and, He's for, and being forgotten in prison forgotten in prison rising to positions Precisely. of responsibility right. so no <laughs> let us say no joseph is governor yes he's not the big man 
And I wouldn't want you to, to just leave it like this. God has a way of working things out. And even when things seem bad and you can't understand, mm -hmm. the hand of God is still at play. Trust his hand. Yes, so as, he's as, now as, as a governor. You, normally say. Yes. you need to trust his hand. Yes. But you know something? Here is a point in time now. Yes. There is a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. The world has a famine. But one place was green. Because God used him now. God used him. Still a young man. Mm -hmm. This place was green. God is saying, I have placed you here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. As he would do any one of us if we allow ourselves to be used by him. That's right. There was a split screen, so to speak. A father with his son saying, listen, we're having a challenge where we live. Challenge, you have to put it a little, you have to add some um, adjectives to that. It's tough, it's hard. And we're going to die. We're going to die. Sure. But there's one place that I know of that still has food. Egypt. It's called Egypt. I'm telling God is marvelous. He's amazing. Wonderful God. Mm-hmm. So the journey. You have to go down there to get some food. You have to go get food. There's no choice. We're going to die. No choice. Mm-hmm. Only place is to the heathen land. Mm-hmm. We're going to go to Egypt. That's right. Not a place that we want to go down to, but we have to go to Egypt. That's right. So here is Egypt. Mm -hmm. And as, would, as fate would have it, they have come face to face with someone who they don't know. But who knows them? But who knows them? That's right. That's Joseph. And as they say, the story continues. The story continues. Elder, what do you think must have been Joseph's feeling on seeing his brothers after 22 years i mean what must I, have been his feeling i'm trying to project myself mm -hmm. into the situation what there are a number of questions i think young people would have come to my mind yes are they the same ones do they still have the hatred for me they still they still want to kill me you know have they changed you know I need to know what's happening back at home. I think a flood of questions came into their minds. But you know what is fascinating? He recognized them, but they didn't recognize him. Because when God works for you, I'm telling you something miraculous happens to you mm -hmm. that sometimes you have to say, is Ati that though? Yes, you know, sometimes I didn't even know. Transformation yeah. has taken place. And God is making his work in Joseph yeah. come to a place where he wanted it to come. No, no, because we are limited in time. Yes. We have to get to this very important point now. Where Joseph had to declare himself. I want I you to know you don't want to go there. I don't want you to go there. Because of time, but yes. I'm going to give you a chance to put in that piece. Yes, because you see. I think all those questions he had to answer for himself mm -hmm. because there was a need and i think young people and those who are listening you know sometimes people give positive answers which are not meant just because they are in need and they want the need to be satisfied because they were there because they didn't have food that's right and i mean it was a case of life and death so when they come i mean i have known persons you see people out there in need elders who are there and um Elder Buckley, and they ask for something, and they would say they want to cut your yard, and they want to clean, and they want to do so many things. And by the time you 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 take them seriously, just trying them, you know, and say, All right, they start to have paid, they have to have something else. Mm -hmm. In other words, they don't declare the truth at the beginning. The motive is not right. So, but he had to prove it for himself. So they put he put them through a lot of tests that we can't tests. go through this evening. He's hiding stuff in their bags and all yes, kind of things. Yes, yes. And, and I'm hoping we get a chance to vet out all of this. But as I say, we're at the point now where he declared his hand. Listen, before he declared his hand, elder. We're going back again, elder. Yes, man. <laughs> because when he listen, some of the things that Joseph did to make sure that there was a change of heart, I think. When I say that he's a type of cross, that is what he wants to see, that there is a change of heart. Mm -hmm. Because without a change of heart, what he wants to do and to see happen cannot happen. So he didn't speak in their language. So, 
He used a different language, so they couldn't think that he was the person. It threw Very them exactly. off guard. He was, they were listening to a full Egyptian. Yes. They were seeing an Egyptian governor, ruler, and big then, man. And then he must have been dressed up in his, in his, in his governor robe. And you saw it hard for them to recognize him. That's right. You understand? Yes. But, but, but Elder. We see that something is happening to him though, Elder. It's happening. But something comes in now. That is where you just mentioned the fact that Joseph was looking to see if there was any change. Yes. And to see if the resentment and the bitterness that they had against him had dissipated and gone. Mm -hmm. Because after all, it's 22 years. Mm -hmm. 22 years, Elder. It 22 years had passed. Yes. An importance of the need for some things to change before reconciliation begins. Yes. And we also see that we can have somebody can have art against you 22 years 22 years some people had died with other people mm -hmm. in their hearts that's right and there was no reconciliation so you realize that's a serious thing and, and it brings an important point now you see young people elder just said somebody having art against you mm -hmm. elder McDonald had says you must leave your gift at the altar and you must go. Not the victim, not the victim must not go, you victim. know. Not the, not the person. You who they have something against, you must go and reconcile. That's right. No, that's a hard sell. That's a hard one. It's a hard sell, Ella. You mean that if you do me something, Elder Ati? Mm -hmm or if i even suspect that there is something you believe that i have done you mm. you must come to me i must come to you but that's not the normal thing in no, our world today that is not what the world teaches this is what god expects from his children but this that's the example he said he left heaven he left heaven Why? and he came because of love for us and he sought to bridge the gap. Because there was a broken relationship between ourselves and our God. Yes, in the interest of time, let's move on now. So what happened? Many tests that they went through. Many tests. And I think the big test came when um, he said, do you have any more brothers? Mm -hmm. And then they went. They said, no, they said, no, no, no. I think that was where the proof was in the pudding. That's right one is there but if we go back for him father going dead man he's going to it was going and there was one mm. already who is not not that means that he's dead you know they think he's dead more than ella it means therefore that they have been living the same life for 22 years that they have become a norm to them so that they can just listen it is as if it, it, it did is you know what the father thought that he was dead because he, he was killed him, they yes. showed him the coat that was torn up uh -huh. and he's saying that an animal must have got my son yes so the lie was solid and it was accepted and the father thought he was dead the father thought he was dead so here now the story come to bump because here it is now if they go back to take that one this is going to bring this old man to the grave as the bible said the gray-haired man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then guess what Joseph insisted. You know what was striking about it? That every time he spoke with them many times during the conversation, Joseph had to remove himself, you know, yes. because he was brought to tears. Brought to tears. Brought to tears. And I think tears for two reasons. One, I think he had seen that they were not the same persons and tears of joy be also because he recognized that they were family, is reuniting again with the family. Peace again, he said, saw the prospect of peace yes. in the family. And it says to us, one of the most comforting scene is to see a family reconciled to themselves. Unfortunately, there are so many broken families exactly. that I mean, I hope our program this evening is saying that reconciliation there's a need for reconciliation where there are broken relationships reconciliation and whatever it takes mm -hmm. i hope that will be take away from the from the story and this so evening I'm, I'm saying elder to the young people sometimes it's hard and as we say it's a hard sell but you have to understand 
that as a Christian, you have a responsibility to be clear and to be clean mm -hmm. and to make the wrongs right that you think you may have done. But Elder, we're jumping to this part of the story. Yes. We're having declared his hand. Man, I'm your brother, Joseph. I am your brother. Joseph. I am Joseph. Yes, your brother, whom you... The same one who you sold. Yes. You know, that part came over to me like a bomb. Mm -hmm. He reminded them exactly what they did. And to him, and to them too. And to them too, yes. He had to tell them, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold. And I think at that time, they must have thought that, listen, we're going to get it back this now. Is it. This is it. But he said, never mind. You meant it for, for evil. But God. But God meant it for but good. God. Amen. But Amen. God, God meant, it. meant it for good. God meant it for good. And what is that good? To save the world then from a catastrophic famine. Yes. Notice that he didn't blame them, you know. Didn't blame. Didn't blame. There was. Didn't reprimand and them. And there was enough blame to go around. Yes. But he, he didn't do that. Yes. He said, listen, I am Joseph, your brother. Yes. Who you sold in Egypt. Yes. And I like this part where he had to send out the people who were in his household. Yeah, man. God's side. Yeah, man. For the reconciliation. The reconciliation the, the, is the, now the, between family. Family, yes. Physical. Physical. Sorry, I'm glad COVID wasn't around that time. Precisely. So Hugging. There was, no, there was no distancing there. No distancing there. So he hugged them individually and he cried. Ask about the old man. Where's my father? Where is daddy? Yes. Listen, how is he doing? How is he doing? And they cried. And everybody had to come down now. But Ella, mm -hmm. as we close. Yes. An important thing in this, that there's a very important key. The key to reconciliation is our attitude. Yes, sir. What say you? Attitude. Attitude. And listen to me. To live with guilt is something that would destroy you. Because guess what? As Joseph reconciled with the brothers, the brothers needed something else. They asked him forgiveness, you know. At that point, there was no need because they recognized that Joseph had forgiven them already. But they said no. They had to go and get the father to come down mm. and enjoy all that Joseph could now give them yes. in that land. They had to now go and confess also to their father because the lie that they had told was that Joseph was killed. The 22 year lie. But 22 year lie. But you notice there was no hesitation. No hesitation. They went straight to their father. They confessed. They told him everything. And notice how you, the victim, the person on the other end, how they responded. We notice how jo Joseph responded. And we notice the father. The father forgave them. And it's like brush it aside. Mm -hmm. The important thing Moving is on. we are together again. And that's family. And that's family. Reconciliation mm -hmm. is having a good attitude. Having a good, it, it, you a, have love. A good attitude is submitting yourself to God. Submitting yourself to God. Elder, if there's anything I would like to say to those who are listening this afternoon as we close, you say, it is that there is nothing worth harboring in your heart. Mm. If you just take seriously, the Lord says, if you have, if you believe, is that if you know, you know, believe. if you believe your brother has art against you, leave your gift and you go reconciliation is a is, is is sweet reconciliation brings peace it brings happiness it brings togetherness and people are able to live together as a family exactly. and that's what i would say to our young people it doesn't have to be your physical family but let us all together if we have anything that there is any doubt is there anybody you can't meet and greet if there's anybody who is not meeting you and greeting you and have that openness and that love emanating and demonstrated in their life let's learn from this story this evening i'll close by saying this one thing at the end of the apartheid era in south africa when president mandela became the head of state there was a a truth and reconciliation committee yes i think i remember that put in place yes 
because it was intended to create healing. Amen. Christ wants us to be reconciled with his Father. Mm -hmm. We need to experience healing within us. It will require for us to be truthful and to repent of the things and the sin that so easily besets us. My word to you, Elder, and to our young people is that we should not harbor within us anything that will destroy us. It is said that the, 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 the container in which acid is stored is destroyed more easier than anything else. That will happen to us when we keep inside this, this, this hurt and this unforgiveness. Yes. It destroys us. Yes. Let us go forward with one thing in mind. To reconcile ourselves to our God. But also to have a relationship with each other. One that is healthful. One that is hopeful. And one that is filled with joy. Amen. We may have to cry like Joseph, but it was worth it at the end of the road. It was worth it. Have a good evening. God bless and you. Thanks for your time, Ella. Okay. Thank you. Once I was drifting, lost and in sin. Once I was dying. A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country there wasted his substance with riotous living. <laughs> and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave to him When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? 
I will go to my father. I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came unto his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. All right, good afternoon, AYs, as we continue this very intriguing topic of reconciliation. Um, Elders Otti and Wind would have talked about the story of Joseph found in the Old Testament. We want to look at another familiar story, this time from the New Testament, Luke chapter 15, the story of the prodigal son. We know that the story is well known, so we won't rehearse the details of the story, Elder Sam. Mm -hmm. um, and for the benefit of our viewers out there, I am Marjorie Buckley, and with me is Elder Sonia Samuels. So, Elder, let's just jump right in there. Was there a need for reconciliation in this story of the prodigal son? There was certainly a need for reconciliation because first of all, the second son, not even the first one, and you know that in those Israelite society, the first son, everything comes yeah. through the first son. He's the heir. He's the heir. He asked for his inheritance before his father died. Mm. And that was disrespectful yes. and showed that he didn't care much about his father. Mm -hmm. Because you think of an inheritance when the person dies. Right. So he asked for his inheritance. And as a, an Israelite, grown up into an Israelite home, he left because he wanted to go to explore the mm -hmm. world. Yes. And he, it was, I'm sure it pierced his father's heart. Yes. When he asked for his inheritance mm -hmm. so much before time. Yes. To go out right. to see the world. Yes. And to add to that, the Bible tells us that he spent, squandered All his father's hard-earned inheritance. Squandered it. Living, riotous living. And for a Jewish boy... I want our young people to think about it. Let us contemporize the story. You, an Adventist young person, grown up in an Adventist home, left home, and no party miss you, mm -hmm. gal in a bungle, mm -hmm. every bad thing you could think about, that young man was involved in it. And as you said, it must have pierced the father's heart. He brought the family name into disrepute. And that was really bad. And so clearly there was a need for reconciliation. But I want to move on to ask the question. Who should initiate this reconciliation? Because to my mind, the person who does the wrong deed mm -hmm. is the person that the should person initiate itself. the reconciliation. Yes. The onus is on that person to go seek forgiveness, to make restoration where possible and, and all of that. So don't you think that this young man should have initiated the reconciliation? The, the reconciliation? Yes. yes, that's what we think, Sister Buckley. But 
in Elder McDonald's introduction, she quoted 2 Corinthians mm -hmm. that says that the Lord has given to us the ministry of, of reconciliation. reconciliation. It's mm -hmm. a ministry. Okay. So, and Jesus' example, he, when we were in sin, not even thinking of being reconciled to him, he reached out to us mm -hmm. for reconciliation. Yes. So even though we would think that the one who has done wrong should be the first to initiate reconciliation, Jesus' example is that he, yes. one not doing any, the wrong, initiated reconciliation. Yes. In the story of the prodigal son, mm -hmm. the son came to his senses because he was brought very low, low. to the depths. He was feeding pigs. Jews have no yes, dealings that's with a pigs. Low. New law. Mm -hmm. New law. And he came to, his, record, to his, his senses and he thought that he's going back to his father because when he realized how far he had, had reached, gone. the yes. depths he had, read, he had reached, he said that he would go back to his father. And he didn't think that he was worthy of being a son anymore. Mm -hmm. But he would ask his father to be one of the hired servants. Yes, and I want... But yes, never. yes. <laughs> when a father's love... Yes. You cannot underestimate a right. father's love. When he was afar off, mm -hmm. the Bible tells us, his father saw, saw him, him and he initiated the yes. reconciliation yes. he ran to him hugged him and kissed him and gave him a new robe a, a ring, ring and restore him restored as a son him mm -hmm. back to yes. his sonship stopped him in the middle of his rehearsed speech but you know lsm i put myself in this story you know and the father is really a type of the heavenly father That's right. and his love for us. Mm -hmm. Because if I were that parent, and thank God I am not God, mm. if I were that parent, I would take up that young man's proposition and let him go work with live in the slave the, 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 the um, servants' quarters because and we, work there, teach him a lesson or two. Lesson. That's what but we thank say. God, God is not, not like, like that. Yes. yes? Mm -hmm. And I remember when i used to teach cornerstone sabbath school there was an illustration of the story of the prodigal son and they focused on the father running to meet the son and i never forget this commentary the writer made he said any other picture of god you have in your head remove it this picture of the father running right. with open arms to, to welcome, welcome back, back his, son, his son who had done so much wicked things. That's what that is the image of God. So as we wrap up Elder Sam, because we are pressed for time. What then? So we have established the need for reconciliation. We have um, seen that the father it is and one. in our context, God mm -hmm. it is that initiates the reconciliation because we have gone astray. We have strayed from God. Mm -hmm. As we wrap up, what then are the benefits of reconciliation? Why is reconciliation such an important thing? The wise man said that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones, bones so yes. in Proverbs 17. And we can all understand that the father's heart was broken. Mm -hmm. I think the son came to a point too when his heart was broken, when he realized what he has Hurt. done. Yes. Now, when they met and they became reconciled, I'm sure they had a merry heart. The father had a merry heart. Oh, yes. And the, the, the wise man says, do it good like a medicine. Yes. And it gives you a sense of joy. Reconciliation brings back the joy. Yes. So that is what happened to that family. And peace. And peace. Mm -hmm. And all the good things. Because, you know, when you're, recon when you're um, estranged from somebody, you, 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 sometimes it takes a physical toll, toll right. on you. Mm -hmm. But thank God, the, this reconciliation brought back joy and, and a merry heart and all the good things to both the two parties, yes. this father and this son. Yes. And I just want to say quickly before you finish that, um, it is very important because even in the Lord's prayer, he says that 
um, the prayer says, forgive me as I forgive, forgive my others. debtors. Yes. And further on in that same chapter, it says, if you do not forgive your brethren, neither will the Lord forgive you. And, you know, I want to say to our um, audience yeah. that as Christians, we really ought to take this home because too often I see people in malice in church. That's right. Right? And I'm sitting over there where Elder Wint is sitting and mm -hmm. I am not even casting my eye over that side because I don't want to see sister so-and-so over there. Right. And it just don't work because if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Bible Lord tells me, not, the yeah. Lord will not answer my prayer. So not only for my own peace of mind That's do right. I need to be reconciled. Right. And the two elders talked earlier on about leaving your gift at the altar and going well, to make amends right before. so not only for my peace of mind and for harmony in the family in the church we also need this reconciliation if we are serious about seeing god's face let us not remember the elder brother mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He did not like oh, what yes. happened at all. That is so, true. Re re reconciliation should bring joy to you, but not all the time. We recognize that the elder brother, mm -hmm. he, he, was not not, he was not pleased. Because I suppose like us, sometimes we think that the person, if you do wrong, you must suffer. Mm -hmm. for it. And mm -hmm. he was not pleased at all that his father mm -hmm. did not do anything bad. Or, or he, he thought perhaps his father think that the son did not do anything bad to go away mm -hmm. and come back home. Yes. But let us not be like the elder brother. Let us be happy because God came to save us when we could not save ourselves and didn't even know that we need reconciliations. So let us be happy for reconciliation. Let us be glad that Jesus came and reconciled us to himself. Amen. Well, thank you, Elder. We are out of time. But I just want to say in closing, brothers and sisters, this is a serious thing. And too often, as people of God, we are unforgiving. And that does not work well. It does not please God. So as we have talked about reconciliation this afternoon, I am praying that it will be a reality in our experience. Right. Think about somebody who may have ought against you. And as the good book says, let us take the initiative and go and make right, wrongs right. Mm -hmm. So we are giving you the opportunity. You can type in the chat to share any experience of reconciliation you may have and how it made you feel. God bless you and we thank you for your participation. This evening as elders, we could simply end the program by simply saying thanks to everyone for taking the time out and for sharing. But my brothers and sisters, we would have defeated the purpose if we did not make an appeal to everyone to be reconciled to God. You see, the fact that we have sinned, we all need reconciliation. The fact that Sin has caused separation between us and God. We need reconciliation. The fact that there are broken relationships. We need reconciliation. We have broken relationships between husbands and wives. Broken relationships between siblings. Broken relationships between neighbors, broken relationships, between brothers and sisters. And I am I'm reminded of a church that was conducting a lunch, a church lunch. And while the ladies were cooking, the younger said to the older, how much time with a wash rice? 
and the older one respond three times. And believe you me, the younger one laughs the older one to scorn. And for years, they did not speak to each other. Broken relationships, all because of one little silly joke. We need to be reconciled to God and with our fellow men so we can be at peace with God and with our fellow men. We need to be reconciled to God so we can receive forgiveness of our sins and we can also receive pardon. And so the question is, how do we receive or experience reconciliation? We receive reconciliation simply by repenting of our sins to God and accepting divine grace and mercy. We receive reconciliation simply by confessing our faults one with another so that we will be healed. So it is always necessary to be reconciled. Most importantly, we have to be reconciled to God. And I want you to visualize a triangle. And at the apex of that triangle, you have God. On the left side, you have us. And on the right, there we have others. And so the closer we get to God at the apex is the closer we will get to each other. Reconciliation is vitally important. That's why it is important that we seek to be reconciled on a daily basis with God by simply repenting by simply confessing our faults one with another so that the good Lord will have mercy and will retain our names in the book of life and at this time we will invite all of you all of us to bow our heads as we seek to pray and ask God not just only to enlist us in this ministry of reconciliation, but to help us to experience it so that we can be ready for the kingdom of God. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Our Heavenly Father and our God, great is thy faithfulness. We are privileged, O oh God, to be able to come before you because we recognize that we need to be reconciled. And most important, Father, we are thankful to know that reconciliation is in Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to you but through Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray every day as we live, help us to see the importance of being reconciled with you, of being reconciled with our fellow men, so that we can be ambassadors in the ministry of reconciliation. We ask, O oh God, that you will help those who are experiencing serious conflicts, that they will...